Hey there. Looking for new headphones that you want to use with your Quest 2 or Quest 1? Well, I've been using these uh, Sennheiser HD 450 BTs for the last year and a half, uh, and I think they pair excellently with the Quest for a number of reasons. They almost feel by design for the Quest. I'll explain why. Um, and I think their price, which is around about, at the moment, either $200 or about 150 pounds, is a very good price for an excellent pair of all-rounders uh, that will sort you out for audio in all your day-to-day -day needs. So I ran across these headphones first when I bought the 350BTs, which is a slightly um, older model of the same thing. A little bit stripped down, doesn't have um, active noise cancelling like these ones do, and is very important for VR immersion. But I loved their their, their like durability. Um, their I I, I love the kind of the ear padding, um, just the general flexibility for travel. They come with a little travel case, which I never really end up using. But um, what's great is you can cable them, and they've got a kind of like a mini jack uh, into a 90 degree connector. And, and that's brilliant because uh, for travel purposes, uh, for entertainment with, uh, you know, just a phone or a cell phone or mobile, um, or really any other, like, activity, they're very, they're just the right size and fit. Now, the nice thing is that you'd think with a, a cup size that looks a little bit, um, maybe a little bit small, um, are they uncomfortable to wear, you know? Um, I was actually gifted with with quite large ears. Um, and I'm sure the older I get, the bigger they get because cartilage doesn't stop growing. But they're comfortable for me. Um, and for at least an hour, I don't get any um, ear sweat or anything like that. Now after an hour, I'd say that changes. Because they're closed back, and I do mean closed back, there's nothing getting in or out of these things. Um, even without the noise canceling on, they're deadening to your environment. So sometimes I just put them on. If I'm sitting in the room with the kids or something like that, and um, it's just nice to kind of have them for that reason. They're they're good to go to sleep with. Aside from you can't really rock on your side with this, you'd probably need some in ear monitors for that. But um, these are really really nice on an airplane as well. As I said, they kind of have some act like uh, passive deadening that 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 works to isolate you from your environment. But why does it work so well with Quest? So the size of the headphones are really fantastic, and they just kind of pop right on there. Uh, they don't interface uh, in a bad way with the, with the head strap. Uh, they cover your ears completely, completely circumoral. And uh, as a closed back design, they actually look quite sleek, I think, with this. So you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a, pretty, good, uh, it's a pretty good fit. So um, aside from that, I think that the headphones in terms of their style is great. It's very street wearable. They don't look ridiculous. I've got a few pair of Sennheisers that are like not the nicest to like wear on the street. These things, nobody really will bat an eye at them. They look very much just like a, a standard kind of street wear headphone. They don't jet out a huge amount. They're actually quite streamlined. I used to walk the streets of San Francisco uh, with my HD 280 Pros, which were a bigger headset, long cable. This thing, again, if you want to choose to use it cabled, the cable's quite short, yeah? Um, so that's perfect for VR purposes, and I'll maybe show you that a little bit later on as well. And the headphones themselves, as I said, are quite rugged. I, I feel no problem just like whacking them into a bag or something like that, run and gun, and you're good to go. Now let's, let's talk a little bit uh, about some of their features. Their weight, they're pretty, um, uh, they're pretty lightweight headset. I wouldn't say the lightest, but they're also probably not as heavy as they look. They look quite like a tank, um, and they don't feel that way either. So they're a nice, uh, decent weight for your head. I've never felt that the weight was dragging down on me, even in multiple hour sessions. Honestly, the Quest battery runs out after about two to two and a half hours, depending on the gaming or application you're using. So it's not been the headphones that have worn me out. It's been rather the, uh, let's say, the weight of the of the headset. And at about 500 grams, the Quest 2 is basically the same deal. You know, it's, it's, it's a similar kind of feel uh, on your head. So the other thing I wanted to say about these is their active noise canceling is really nice. A few years ago, I've, I've written off um, 
noise canceling headphones because they gave this kind of cabin pressure feeling like you're in an airplane and your ears are about to pop. And I never liked that. I found that quite uncomfortable. These have a really like mild version of noise canceling, which I find is great. It's like just enough to like separate me from outside audio, but not enough to make me, let's say, deaf to my surroundings. Uh, it certainly is enough to kind of bring me into a different world. And that's what I love about them. Uh, when I'm using them with VR. So um, the other thing that I like about the headphones, they've got a very nice band, quite a wide band. I've got a large head. Again, I got nose, ears, and head size here to compare with. Uh, they work well even with kids. My kids work very well with these uh, headphones. And like the, just the general size, I think, of Sennheisers and the build means that I don't feel like, Ugh! You know, I worried when I when I hand them over uh, to to my kids or let's say my wife who tends to like to break my technology. So aside from that, uh, the comfort and fit is really good for day to day use. If you're going to use them for like um, a mobile phone or something listening away, the place you'll I think number one have some gripes with this headphones, and then I'll get into some of the more positives. Just so you know up front, um, the actual headband, like the headband, um, is a little bit. I'd say it's a little bit. Um, light on the padding here. Like it feels like there's a plasticky, soft plasticky membrane. Um, but aside from that, you don't get a lot of, a lot of headband uh, insulation there. They could have done with laying, I don't know, something like a wool texture thing underneath this skin layer outside to insulate you a little bit more from that. Aside from that, they're almost the perfect headphones. Um, Cause you will feel after, as I said, like about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, depending on your head, uh, a little bit of pressure along the top. Now the beauty is that when you're using this with the Quest or Quest 2 is that you don't or you won't have that uh, same problem because the top headband, this little strap, is just enough to take that pressure off. And that's again why I think that they're one of the perfect headphones. So you just pop those on, boom, boom. And even when that's like tightly bound, it's enough that it takes the pressure off of the headphone and it's really great, just that kind of combination. And you can see the kind of, you know, the way that this, this thing looks together is a bit like this, um, all round. So it's a lovely headset. I mean, I really, really appreciate it. The cushion, the, the ear pads are like lovely cushiony. Um, they've got a real nice deep ply to them. It's kind of like a faux leather. Um, and they're, they're not too, what can I say? They're really good to, to, to wipe down. So if you want to play something um, like quite aggressive, uh, like Beat Saber or something like that, that actually works um, very well because then you can just give them like a quick wipe down after the he after the session and they're totally fine. Uh, unlike some other headphones, like for example, I've got these uh, Sennheisers that I've been using for ages. They don't wipe down. Uh, they've got a cloth exterior and that's, you'd have to change the pad uh, really to properly clean that. Sometimes you get fuzz on it, you can kind of collect it, but those are my open backs that I use for gaming. So aside from that, uh, these headphones, I've, I've covered kind of the weight and then the noise canceling side, the style of them, right? The price again, I think is a decent price point for what you're getting here. More expensive than maybe some would want to pay, especially if you just bought like a $300 Quest. You're like, why would I spend, you know, $200 on, on the audio experience? Um, now I'm a guy who's big into audio, like big into audio. And um, I actually use also a sub pack, which I've got on the back of my um, C here, which is for like a tactile feeling. Now I am not uh, opposed to spending money on, uh, on audio gear. I think that these headphones, although it might be a little bit, um, again, hard to justify at the beginning, I think they really do it justice. So I said, this is a headphone that I can use walking around the house, out into the garden. They actually support Aptex as well, uh, which is fantastic. One of the things with the new Quest as opposed to the old one, now for the old one, um, the old one doesn't presently support a Bluetooth connection that in my opinion is good enough to use these for their Bluetooth, okay? So I would recommend cabling them. Now cabling them, as I'm showing, is not a problem at all. There's a 90 degree connector on the audio cable and it is uh, a fantastic pairing and, and comes almost flush with the side of the head strap, um, which is fantastic. It's just like really, really, it looks like Sennheiser designed these headphones 
for the quest. And maybe they didn't, but <laughs> I know they didn't because they came out first. But now there's this new revision of this headphone, which looks absolutely astonishing. It's finished in white with a kind of a brown or tan ear pad. And for that money, for your 150 pounds or thereabouts, um, you get something that matches your Quest 2 just like perfectly. And I look at this and I just think, can I justify getting myself a third pair of these headphones? The reason I got the second pair was because I was so convinced by them. I was like, ooh, everyone's talking about the 450s. Uh, I have the 350s, which don't have the noise canceling. Will I go for it? Uh, and also it's very helpful when one of these runs out of battery to have another one on standby. Now I'm not suggesting anyone else buys a second pair of headphones. In fact, I use the 450 BTs 90% of the time. And the battery is fantastic on these. I literally will play with them for a whole week, um, on off, on off, music, around the garden, all that kind of stuff, and still not need to charge them. In fact, I almost never run the battery out. I just put it on the charger because I feel like I don't want to be without them. <laughs> so I can't really comment. I haven't personally tested this 30 hours that they advertise, uh, but other places have, and they've said very good things about the battery life, uh, exceeding many of the competitors in this price bracket. So um, Sennheiser have done a fantastic job. I've been a Sennheiser fan for about 20 years now, and these are just uh by and far uh, my favorite pairing with the Quest. Nothing else that I have from Sennheiser's line or earbuds or anything else sorts. Uh, this is just amazing. Um, it matches really well with a headset and I actually find that it's just um, in general a, uh, a beautiful marriage between the two. So with that said, um, let's talk a little bit about one feature uh, that drove me insane at the beginning um, in case you're an audiophile, uh, do you remember back in the day, like we had like Sony Walkmans and stuff like that. And what you had with a Walkman or a CD player was track to track, certain models would make a beep in between tracks. Okay. And it can be a bit annoying. So these unfortunately have that feature. So, uh, say I'm connected to, um, say I'm connected to a, a source by Bluetooth and I go from track one to track two on an album I'm listening to, it makes a kind of beep during the exchange. I don't know why they decided that was a good idea to indicate uh, in such a kind of a harsh way to the user that you're um, you know, moving from track to track, especially tracks that bleed into one another. I think it's unnecessary and that bit annoyed me. Actually, it doesn't annoy me anymore. I think it's because I usually use them cabled and I don't think it beeps. Um, uh, it's only when you're kind of changing track and it notices you're changing track uh, that it beeps at you. But single beep, again, you'll get over it. Uh, but I thought I'd, I'd mention it so that you know that that's there. Um, aside from that, I would say that the Bluetooth, as I said, although it's not something I would recommend for current Quest, Quest 2 has an XR2 chip. And what does the XR2 chip have? Well, it has the capability to support Bluetooth 5. And with that and the Aptex control, uh, we have the ability to maybe uh, get low latency connection between these headphones and the experience with no wires. So for a wireless future, and we've already seen things like Wi-Fi 6 confirmed for the headset, I would expect the XR2 chip, the Quest 2, and these headphones to just pair perfectly once that support comes from Oculus. So once I get my hands on Quest 2, should be in a couple of weeks now, um, I will report back about that, but I didn't want you to maybe, uh, you know, go off, spend your hard earned money on the wrong headphones. I've seen some audio solutions, uh, as we've seen from Logitech, uh, promoting for uh, pairing with the Quest, certified to be paired. I personally think that's bullshit. I think that those headphones, um, Logitech are fine for sound, but in terms of the form factor, the fit, how they interface with the headband, all these little little bits and pieces, these headphones are just amazing. And I've got a year and a half's worth of experience saying that these are incredible. They're great for heavy sessions of Onward, they're great for Beat Saber, um, and they're a really fun headphone to listen to as well. One of my best headphones. Um, I'm driving my other Sennheisers, my daily drivers, um, with a Fio E10K, and they sound, amazing. These are almost there. 
these are almost there without being driven or anything like that by an amp they are just a fantastic headphone i love the listening to like monster cat tracks and stuff like that with these headphones really fun to listen to now one other huge benefit and i wanted to be able to share with you um, a tip i got from a friend of mine so um this little box the creative btw2 is a high performance bluetooth transceiver usb um, which you plug in and it is aptx enabled so it's this low latency connection which is i think about 32 36 milliseconds between say your pc audio and those headphones comparing to standard bluetooth it just feels like so snappy so quick um, and i found that because it works with PlayStation 4, and I mean, think PSVR, because PSVR in these headphones also works well. And then just pop on like that. Again, no sidebar interference. Um, switch as well. I know that's non-VR, but that also functions really well. So you've actually got this, um, this kind of multi-composited adapter and I'm actually using them right now and if I unplug from my from my PC uh, you'll see this little guy tiny little USB dongle has a tiny little flashing light by creative um, and you just plug that in so you plug it in for instance to the side of the switch uh, the console that you dock in the console dock when you do that it takes about maybe 10 seconds five seconds after you've initially paired them which is super easy and it just, it's, it's on, and you're ready to go. Um, it's fantastic. Same thing with PC. Pop them in, maybe eight seconds or so, and they're connected. Uh, and the same thing for PS4. I've got a PS4 Pro, and it works with PSVR. If you're using the Aptex dongle for 25 pounds from Creative, then you're able to just disappear into this world. And you've lost yourself, perhaps, another cable. So that's another example that I just wanted to, to share with you. And so you could see exactly how these work together. So that's a that's an incredible like combination that I didn't want you to uh, oversee because uh, just for another, and this is uh, currently 25 pounds, probably be about $30 I'd imagine. But with the combination of this little guy, you just, uh, you can start to understand like why the uh, Aptex technology is so important for Bluetooth headphones. It's, it's, it's awesome, it's really good. So what I'm betting on, and partly why I wanted to make this video as well, is that the Aptex support coming to Quest 2, pairing with these headphones, makes it the perfect package. And that's something I didn't want to, to bypass. So anyway, that's my recommendation. Okay, um, these are uh, a great headphone. Very comfortable, good price for what you're getting, and a real all-rounder. And I hope, if you aren't already a fan of Sennheiser Sound, that you come on board with these uh, and get infected like so many other audiophiles at Sennheiser's build quality, long-lasting nature. And uh, the next time you're on a plane, <laughs> which might be a little bit, a little while, that you pop these babies on, you click on the active noise canceling, Ah, oh, and you just feel like in a bubble all by yourself. You pop on your Quest 2 or your Quest 1 and you just enjoy your flight. So until then, thanks very much for watching. I hope these help you out.